Hello whiskey fans, hello purchasing patrons of peat. It's that time of the year again, it's Karchus time. So Karchus is the, the annual special release that we get from Laphroaig. It's basically their Fisila bottling, but they decide to call it Karchus rather than Fisila for unknown reasons. Karchus, as most of you will know, is Scots Gaelic for friendship. And I must admit that I was pretty excited about this one. Excited because I love Laphroaig. Any long-term viewers will know that they do piss me off quite a bit with their chill filtration on some bottles, not all. The way that they use E150A Spirit Caramel colouring for most of their releases. And the fact that they bottle their standard 10-year-old at 40% in a time where most distilleries, at least on Isla, are giving us a better presentation than the bare minimum strength, especially when Laphroaig are constantly calling themselves one of the most richly flavoured of all Scotch whiskies, and they're giving us the weakest presentation they can here in the UK. But all that aside, I do really love Laphroaig, and I think that almost everything that they do that's bottled over 40% is really, really good. Anyone that likes their peated whiskey that doesn't like Laphroaig, possibly because there's a little bit, it's kind of heavy on those iodine TCP, very medicinal notes in Laphroaig. That's a common theme, so that puts some people off. The other thing that I have experienced when I've given Laphroaig to people before is a lot of people find it a very sweet whiskey. Especially people that aren't that receptive to peat, they maybe don't pick up the phenolic notes that much. And this isn't something that's talked about a lot, but I think that Laphroaig is a very sweet whiskey. Especially for a generally unsherry distillery house style, Laphroaig does tend to be very sweet. And in my opinion, and a few others, it does seem to be getting sweeter and more rounded and more refined year by year. Anyway, back to the bottle that we've got here today. The other reason that I was excited about this one is because on paper, it looks like it could be one of the better Karchis, Karchises, Karchai, Karchai releases. And you'll see why when we start looking at the details that we've been given on this one. So... Bad stuff out of the way first. It doesn't say that it's natural colour, which is kind of par for the course when you're talking about Laphroaig. Even stuff where they tell us that it is natural colour, or we know that it is, they often just don't bother to tell us. Also doesn't say that it's non-chill filtered, which is a massive shame if it is. Also doesn't say that this is cask strength. It is bottled at 52.2% ABV. So I would guess that it's almost certainly not cask strength, but it's obviously up there. It's a good drinking strength. And it's also interesting, that ABV that they've chosen, 52.2, this being the cartridge release for the year 2022, it seems like they might be bringing back the year in the ABV thing that they were doing a few years ago. Some of you might not be aware, but that used to be a thing that Laphroaig would do. They'd work the, the year of release into the ABV. So the 2014 Amontillado finish cartridge release was 51.4% ABV. The 2018 was 51.8%, so it's quite nice that they were ever so slightly creeping up over the years. And then they had a few years when they just didn't bother. We had, there was a couple of releases which were cask strength, so we can excuse them for that. But there was a few where the ABV just seemed a bit random. They seemed to break the trend. So it seems like with 52.2 in 2022, they might be going back to that. And while we're talking about the previous Karchis releases, I do need to say a little bit about the history of Karchis and what we've got from them in the past. In my opinion, and I think a lot of people's opinion, a lot of the Karchis releases tend to be kind of messed around with. You get a lot of wacky cask finishes in there. Obviously last year we had the PX Sherry cask, which I didn't like at all. We've also had things like the Amontillado Sherry that I mentioned in 2014, which again, didn't love that much. We've had Madeira, which I thought worked a bit better. We've had the, the 2020 Port and Red Wine casks, which I did like. So it's very much hit and miss as far as I'm concerned. We have also had some more straightforward, kind of familiar Laphroaig treatments with some of the cartridge releases. Like we've had a, a cask strength triple wood, which was very good. And we've had a, a cask strength quarter cask release in the Karchus range. 
but this one in particular I'm a bit more excited about this than a lot of the previous ones because this is a much more straightforward treatment of Lefroy Karchis in that it's matured solely in first fill maker's mark bourbon casks. So you could argue this is kind of the closest you get to the standard 10 and the 10 cask strength in terms of maturation in this Karchis because bourbon maturation at least these days, is kind of the standard maturation type for a lot of people. Some people may disagree, especially if you've been drinking for many, many decades. But it is kind of true that, these days at least, bourbon casks are kind of the default maturation for Scotch whisky. There's also an argument to be had that bourbon casks, kind, apart from refill, obviously, bourbon casks tend to let the base spirit shine more than other cask types do. They tend to add a bit of sweetness and maturity, but they, compared to sherry or port or red wine, things like that, they tend to take a little bit more of a backseat, so you really get to see what the house style and the spirit is about more than you would with, say, a PX cask. So I think that's enough about that. Let's Get some in the glass, see what we've got. So as you can see, level's gone down quite a lot on this one. I've been giving this one to everyone to get their thoughts as well. And I've also been, well, I've been hitting this one quite hard. In moderation, obviously, but I've been enjoying this one a lot. Because, spoiler, I really like it. And it's a really interesting whiskey. Going back to what I was saying about the presentation on this one, one thing I do hate about Lefroy is you quite often get these kind of compressed crumb, sort of composite sawdust bitty corks with Lefroy, which I wouldn't be thrilled about if I was keeping one of these long term, but it seems intact so far. Let's leave the bottle out. I do really like the presentation on these, they've kind of gone with the thin. It's a blue stripe on this, but kind of similar to the thin green stripe what we get on the on the 10 cask strength releases. And you can also see Warehouse 1 on there. I don't know if I mentioned that, but another thing that's exciting about this whiskey is that it's matured solely in Warehouse 1, which is the famous warehouse on the shoreline at Lefroig, if you've been there. The one that's actually got Lefroig lettered on the front of the, the warehouse. So, kind of the real deal with this one. 100% straightforward bourbon casks and all matured in the, the number one warehouse. Something that they do mention on the tube of this one, they also say that they kind of hint that you're going to get more salinity, more brine, more coastal maritime notes in this one because it is matured in that warehouse which is right on the edge of the water. So, we'll see if that's true. But going back to the presentation, to what I was saying, the colour of this one, I think you'll agree, very, very pale. So Lefroig notoriously loved to dump pollutants into their whisky, artificial colouring. Obviously a lot of distilleries say that the colouring doesn't make any difference, but do you really want foreign chemicals in your whisky? Is there any need for it? But this one, it's great to say that it looks like it's either either is natural colour or has a very, very small amount of colouring in it because that's paler than almost all the Freaks that I've had before. It's just a shame that they can't put that guarantee of natural colour on the label. Anyway, Lefroy Karchis Warehouse Number 1, Karchis 2022, on the nose. Straight away, I can confirm that as they suggested on the label and the tube, this is quite a maritime, briny, salty Lefroig. Also getting quite a bit of creamy vanilla peat, which is kind of the trademark for modern Lefroig now as far as I'm concerned. That kind of warm, sweet, vanilla heavy, burnt, warming peat. Also quite a bit, quite reasonably medicinal, not extremely medicinal like some Lefroig is, but there's a lot of medicinal notes in there. TCP, a little bit of germaline. Also getting, it's quite oak forward. Quite heavy notes of kind of like a toasted oak cask. So there's definitely a prominent wood note in there, but, and I'm 
pleased to say this, it's not your typical wood spice note, so it's not like your ginger, cinnamon, cardamom, those sort of raw, oaky, freshly sawn oak notes. It's just a strong note of sort of toasted and seasoned oak casks. Also pleased to say that this isn't overly vanilla -ed. It's not a huge vanilla bomb, despite being matured in those first fill bourbon casks. Getting a little bit of pineapple on the nose, light pineapple, so like a, a sweet, juicy fruitiness. It's also a curious nuttiness on the nose to this year's Karchis release. And that nuttiness, it comes across to me at least as a sign that this is not necessarily an incredibly old whiskey, but a very well matured whiskey. There's some very mature malty notes. And last note that I'm going to give on the nose here, and this is definitely an oddball note for Lefroig, dandelion. There's a lovely floral sweetness to the nose of this whiskey. Let's see how it tastes. So again on the palate, lots of lovely salty brininess, lots of really nice warming peat. There's a distinct burnt peatiness on the palate of this as well, and I think that's probably coming through partly from the actual burnt phenolic smoky peaty notes, and also a little bit of barrel char perhaps. Lots of saltiness though, very maritime, very bracing brininess, salty, freshly sawn, astringent oakiness. And again on the palate, a nice pepperiness. But no ginger or cinnamon or anything like that. So prominent peppery woodiness, but not your usual sort of virgin oak notes. Little note of tar, sort of tarred ropes as people normally call it. Salty licorice, which again brings us back to that maritime briny quality. And again, quite a nice nuttiness on the palate. A nice dry nuttiness, which in my opinion, to me... It kind of reminds you a little bit of a really good fino sherry, which is great. Wonderful tasting note. All in all, on the palate, I think that it's a very good Laphroaig. It's stereotypically Laphroaig, but it's a little bit more interesting than what you normally get. It's quite complex, and this is kind of a double-edged sword, but I would say that on the palate, it's soft and very dignified. So probably that little bit more elegant and nuanced than what you normally get on an on a young Laphroaig. Let's have one more sip. So as for the finish, long, very long, with a lovely salty gentle pea and nice lingering oakiness. So kind of as we expected, I do think that this is probably the Karchis, out of all the Karchis releases that I've tried, that's closest in style to the basic 10 year old, or at least probably what the basic 10 year old would be if they bottled it at proper ABV. So if you are a fan of the standard Lefroy 10, then you'll absolutely love this. You won't necessarily love the price because it's probably two and a half times the price or maybe a little bit more than the standard 10. But you do at least get something for your money. I would say that this Karchis release, it doesn't have quite have the dry astringent edge that Lefroy used to have sort of 10, 15 years ago. But I think that this one strikes a nice balance because it's also not as overly sweet and cloying as the basic 10 year old or for that matter, the 10 year old cask strength. As for a grade, I'm going to give this one a solid B plus and I'd say that it's an easy B plus. It's a high B plus. When I was looking at the, the specs on paper for this whiskey before I actually tried it, one of the things that I was a bit concerned about is that it's matured in first fill ex-bourbon barrels and I wondered if that might make it too sweet, too rounded, too honeyed, vanillaed, like a lot, like the this year's batch of Lefroy 10 cask strength. It's a little bit too sweet and mild and gentle and rounded for my tastes and I was a bit concerned that that would happen with this because of that 100% ex-bourbon cask policy on this one. So I was kind of expecting to go into this and say would have been nice if we could have had some refill casks on this. But it's really not a huge problem. It's not overly sweet. I think it's worked really well to the point where, apart from talking about my preconceptions that I had with this whiskey, it's kind of not worth mentioning. 
Now, another thing that's disappointing about this is that as far as I could see with my research and as far as I can see scanning the label and the tube, there's no aid statement or even any indirect mention of how old this might be. So does it need to be older? Could it benefit from a few extra years? In my opinion, no, not really. I think it's absolutely fine. I think that tasting this, it may not be quite 10 years. I would probably guess around the eight year mark, but it definitely seems close to 10 years old. And I think that it's absolutely fine. One thing that I have to mention about this carcass though, and I think that some people will be disappointed with this carcass release because it's not all about the brute strength. And I think that's because a lot of people, myself included, are going to be comparing this to the Laphroaig 10 cask strength. And this is a noticeably more gentle whiskey because it's a, a much lower strength than we've been getting with the 10-year-old cask strength releases. I would advise you that if you are going to buy this, do yourself a favour and don't do like an AB comparison with this against the cask strength. Because although I think this has lots of things going for it that make it better in certain ways than the cask strength, you're really setting yourself up for disappointment if you compare this to the level of power that you're even getting out of this year's cask strength. And it's kind of a shame that Laphroaig didn't decide to make this one cask strength like they did with last year's, because that would have solved a lot of those problems. But as it is, I think this is a very, very well-made whiskey from Laphroaig this year. I think it's very interesting, very complex, and a very balanced release for this year's Karchis. Although, at times, a little bit gentle. But I think if you get over that temptation to compare it to the cask strength, it's a really good one. Thanks for watching, and cheers.